right, well, welcome everybody. I think it's time for our 12 o'clock thought leader panel. The topic now is social. My name is Jeff Toyster, I'm with Toyster Performance Solutions, and I'm gonna be your moderator. I've got a wonderful group of panelists here, so let's start off with some introductions, your name, organization role, and if there's anything else you'd like us to know, we'll, we'll start there. All right, my name's Matthew Clare. I'm a technical marketing manager at Mitel, uh, Unified Communications Telecom Company, um, doing specifically contact center solutions within the organization. Um, I came from a company called Prairie Fire Software that I was with for approximately seven years. Um, built up the social media strategy there while uh, sort of championing the marketing front for the contact center. Hi everyone, I'm Lance Freed. I'm the Senior Vice President of Social and Mobile Applications at Five9. Uh, I have a recent executive edition of Five9. Our social engagement analytics platform, SoCoCare, was acquired this past fall by Five9. So um, I've been living, breathing social for the past uh, five plus years as 100% focus. Hi, I'm Lisa Abbott and I'm with Genesis. I'm the director of our digital channels division. Um, so basically I deal with everything but the phone. Mm -hmm. And um, I have um, been working in social probably since 2009 when um, we first developed our first solution um, geared toward the contact center space. Um, Genesis, um, as most of you probably understand, is one of the leaders out there in terms of uh, customer experience platform where we have like thousands of customers um, working um, on our various solutions to enable great customer experiences for their, their customers. Uh, my name is Susan McDaniel and I am the owner and co-founder of a company called Execs in the Know. Uh, we are focused on, we're a community really, of uh, brands and business partners that are dedicated to advancing the conversation in multi-channel. Uh, we do that through thought leadership forums as well as uh, research and benchmarking in the industry. Well, welcome to all of you. Now, just to get started, I think social is one of those terms we throw it out, everybody nods, like social, of course. But I don't know if we're always talking about the same thing. So just to start us off, can we calibrate a little bit? When we're talking about social, what does that mean to you? Yeah, social definitely takes on different meanings to different folks. Uh, you know, our, in my mind, social and what we're talking about here at this event is social engagement for customer care. Very different than social for marketing, which is focused on listening. So this is all about analytics and engagement and treating social no different than a voice channel. Great, I would agree with that. And um, I would build it um, from the next level in terms of Social is, um, as an engagement and analytics channel, isn't something that should just be looked at um, on an individual basis, but should um, be looked at from the entire journey that your customer goes across. So it's really something that um, needs to be handled in the same way, in the same care you would any of your other interactions. Okay. So. I know a lot of organizations and a lot of people are here trying to get more ideas around social, thinking about implementing maybe more social channels in their contact centers. So from your perspective, are, are there some pitfalls or maybe the other side best practices when implementing social in a contact center? Yeah, there, there absolutely are. I mean, you need to start with a strategy um, that defines your goals for social for customer care. Is it a listening strategy, what, are, what type of inquiries and, and posts are you going to engage with. Um, you need to understand where your consumers are talking about you in social. I mean, there's 1.5 uh, billion members uh, on, uh, on Facebook and you've got 500 million tweets a day. The activity's out there, you need to be able to understand where people are talking outside of that. You know, there's, there's other modalities and channels such as uh, Instagram and YouTube. So you need to first understand where your, where your consumer is so that you're, you're actually listening and engaging in the right channel. And then lastly, you need to be able to, you know, make sure you have the right team. You know, you need people that talk social as the agents that are social. And lastly, you, besides the engagement, you need to be able to analyze. So you need the ability to look at the results. 
no different than a voice channel. You need to make sure your KPIs and SLAs are being hit. You need to be able to make sure that you're prioritizing the consumers that have very, very high social scores, social influence, but also that are high value to enterprise. So you need to be able to leverage other technologies such as your CRM to identify so you can properly prioritize. So these are all of best practices and uh, you know, as people are looking at building their strategy out, you certainly need to analyze the technologies that give you all of that in one unified solution. Yeah, just, just building on that, um, talking about the people that are actually engaged in the conversations, one of the big pitfalls is transparency. Um, so customers relate to people. People relate best to people. Uh, customers don't associate with brands necessarily, so if you have a brand responding to a customer service inquiry on Twitter, for example, that level of customer experience diminishes because suddenly it's it's not about people connecting with people, it's about people connecting to a brand. So you want to set up your strategy in a way where your actual agents are involved and receiving those messages and responding as agents on behalf of the company um, to sort of add that level of personalization to the conversation. Um, I think I would add that you know, if you've done the homework and you're going to go down the path of social because you recognize your customers are there and that's where you, they want you to be. Um, the four cornerstones, you know, everyone's mentioned it, there's listening, there's um, predicting, then there's engaging, and there's integration. So make sure that you're integrating, you have all of your departments at the table, marketing, customer service, uh, public relations, you all have to work together rather than working in the silos. It's really critical to make sure everyone's on board. So, Susan, I want to, I want to touch on that because the, the idea of integration, and, and there's a big question, who owns social or who owns social channels? And maybe a two-part question for you and, and any of the other panelists. Uh, who owns it by and large now, mm -hmm. uh, and who should own it? That's a, a fantastic, very debatable question, I think. Um, <laughs> I think traditionally, and how we started a few years back, it was about marketing, um, and it's been more and more about customer service, taking ownership, um, and I think our actually our research has suggested that it used to be 50% of folks were marketing owned. Now we're really we're seeing the growth and the emergence of customer service owning that piece. Not completely. I, I would say always it's about centralization. It's about making sure that everyone's at the table, um, including areas that you wouldn't naturally think about. Um, you know, we're really right now looking at even having corporate social responsibility at the table as just you know another group that. Uh, making sure you have your full context of your organization on that channel. I, I would actually say too, and, and the, the great um, survey report that your organization actually publishes at Execs and No actually showed that it, from 2012 to 2013, there was a huge increase in terms of social media in the contact center. It went from 12% to 36%, and that's a very large increase. And also, when you start looking at the way organizations are structuring themselves, they're, they're coming to much more of a centralized um, approach internally, which means that they really need to be partnering um, with marketing. I think marketing clearly understands um, over the last several years of engaging with their customers that you know, both the contact center and customer service need a voice at the table. Um, from that perspective. So in many companies, the best way to handle that is by having a unified platform so that you have um, one listening approach and that those, as those interactions come in, they're actually sent to the right and prospective people you know, right away um, as you're doing your customer engagement. So I, I want to come back to a question that when we did this thought leader panel a year ago, we asked a question around social. And I want to re-ask it just to see if there's any different perspectives now. And, and this is a really another two-part. So I'll ask one at a time. And I, I want you there here to participate as well. <coughs> How many of you show of hands, uh, your CEO is, is on social in some way, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, somehow? So interest, uh, that represents growth, I think, year over year. I mean, this is obviously statistically accurate, right? This sample here representing the universe? Not statistically accurate, but... <laughs> There, there really weren't nearly as many hands. Now the second part though is, and this might be tougher for some of you to answer, but just to kind of see the audience perspective as well, it, how many of your agents are personally using social that are also expected to be a part of that internally? And then, well, let me ask that first. I want to ask you if you think that's important. So is it any show of hands? You're, some of them, yes and no, a little bit? 
Is that important that our agents and our CEO and our executives are personally involved in social for the social channel to be successful? Yeah. I'd say absolutely. Um, that across, you want to, you don't want it to be a siloed approach, right? The last thing you want to do with social is strictly be a reactive experience, whereas your customers are saying things about you, be it positive or negative, and you're responding to them or favoriting them and retweeting them, for example. You, you have to provide some sort of value as an organization on social, whether that's you know best practices for running the software you make or you know posting tips and tricks to a forum, for example, or the sales and marketing pitch, right? Constantly pushing out your brand, growing your brand strategy. It, you really want to break down that silo and have everybody involved. Um, and the, like I said earlier, it comes back to people, right? So the more the more people your customers will see, the better your customers will relate to the company because people deal best with people. Yeah, I, I would agree. And it, it certainly it gets back to um, having the right resources, having the right agents, social agents, you know, those are those the go-getters that are socially savvy, that know how to respond differently between a Facebook post and a Twitter post with character limitations that that do it in their own world. And those are the ones that we typically see move out of the voice world as the first social agents as new enterprises are turning up social engagement for care initiatives. I, th I think I, w oh, did you want to go? Oh, yeah, I, w I was just gonna add to that. You know, it's interesting because we're all talking about this from um, doing social from our company's perspective. <laughs> But one of the interesting shifts for any of us as professionals is that social has become really important in that us as individuals working for our companies have become a brand for our company too, right? And so social media on many levels enables us to become seen as experts in engaging with our customers out there. And so I think that is a huge shift too. So yes, it's important that we have our agents doing this, but in many cases, the agents are also out there building their brands um, to represent your company. And I would just take a slightly different bend on it in that and when I was in the contact center world, I would always, as the director of the operations, I would be on, I would go from de department to department, I'd jump on the phone. I wasn't very good, but I was, you know, I would take a call and I would get out there and so I, I, I struggle with the concept of running a brand and not understanding or a, um, a business part not understanding the capabilities of social. So I would say if you're not seeing how you're using it personally to see, you know, why should I be on Foursquare? Oh my gosh, look at all the different, you know, when I check in, I can, I can promote stuff, I can do different things. Um, I think that just gives, uh, it gives you more credibility, it lets you see how people are working and what really the value of those channels are. So I would encourage people to be on those channels for sure. So it, it sounds like from some of this discussion, even year over year, we're seeing social proliferate even more. And, and I know a lot of people here are probably wondering, you know, how do we get into it? How do we do more? So the next question for you is, can we optimize the technology we have or do we have to make some pretty big investments to really get into social right? I think there's, there's two answers to your question. Um, for the enterprise that has not made a significant investment in their contact center infrastructure, um, there are some best of breed standalone all-in-one social solutions um, that, um, that very, um, very much fill the void and the need that will give all of the different analytics and reporting and monitoring capabilities just as though it were a voice channel. Um, the flip side to that is for enterprises that are using carrier grade enterprise level solutions, cloud solutions like at 5.9, uh, the ability to just turn on an additional channel such as social and have it already pre-integrated and working with the existing call center infrastructure for voice, email, chat, and the likes um, is a significant value add. I was going to say the only challenge you run with um, develop, developing or deploying a point solution is the fact that it does become really a siloed approach, and and from a contact center perspective or from a you know enterprise perspective just managing to a channel isn't usually enough when it comes to your customer experience. 
because at the end of the day, your customer is not going to churn j with you just because of one experience. It tends to be because of the big picture experience. And so the more that you can integrate this and pivot from social to more private channels as necessary and be able to do that by carrying context across those channels and having that experience designed, at, because we know that today they may be in a, you know, engaging with you through social, but tomorrow they're going to be picking up the phone. And we all know internally that usually it's two different sets of people. But from a customer perspective, they see you as one company. And so the better that you can design that experience to be integrated, um, the better the experience will be, but it, it will also be a, a much more efficient process for you internally. Mm -hmm. So I think we have time for one last question. And the, the question for all of you is to get out your crystal ball and tell us what's next mm -hmm. in the world of social. I think uh, really it's it's going to be adoption. Um, people people understanding that they they can monetize social media. I mean, contact centers as a whole in the industry have been slowly evolving from profit uh, centered sort of organizations where you know your contact center costs you more money than you're making out of your contact center, and businesses are slowly realizing that no, you're actually your contact center is a revenue generating business stream, and social is no different, right? So if you can sort of as part of your whole social strategy, find a way to monetize social media, um, then suddenly all the executives start seeing dollar signs and will light up and get excited about social. If you're just going to listen and respond to negative comments on Twitter, I, th I think you're destined to fail. Um, from a technology point of view, I think the one spot that uh, social hasn't really hit with uh, contact center technology is the WFO side of things, so the workforce optimization, being able to sort of take that historical data on social interaction, predict future social engagement levels. Um, that's kind of the one, the one big missing piece that I see from a technology point of view. So social is the fastest growing consumer customer care communication channel. Um, the enterprises are catching up. You know, um, the recent ICMI survey that was just published earlier this week indicated that 60% of the respondents to the survey, um, enterprise respondents, um, know that social is an important communication channel. However, 68% of that, of that sub base um, are not offering a formalized social customer care channel, and that's because they, the, uh, the need to have a solution that can work within their current environment. It's a big challenge. The business drivers are pretty obvious though. The crystal ball says it's all about customer loyalty, retention, and allowing the consumer to pick the modality as to where they want to communicate with the enterprise. And the survey goes on to indicate that consumers, you know, if they cannot get their channel of preference, uh, social being one of those channels, that even if they get good customer service, they are going to move on to a competitor. So um, I encourage all to download the report. It's, it's uh, very eye-opening. Yeah, I would say another real eye-opening fact in that report was the fact that of those companies that are using social in the contact center, only 8%, only 8% are actually QAing the responses. That, that blew me away. So first, first of all, we should be treating social with the same level of standards we would any other channel and, the, and bringing the consistency both from a service level perspective as well as you know, um, every other facet in regarding that. Um, so what do I think is next? I really think that um, the customer care, the contact center is gonna become the new marketing. Um, I think the you know, promoted tweets and the Facebook campaigns, I think all of that out there is really just noise. I think that's been the biggest change in the last couple years, that's noise. So at the end of the day, what really matters is what your cons customer is really thinking about you. I couldn't agree more with everything these three folks have stated, but I would also add that I think our research showed that a couple years ago, um, People were looking at social and it was all about metrics and you know answering in 24 hours or answering in two hours or whatever you know, whatever they were striving for. Then the following year it became about quality. What are we saying in those responses? What's it really about? And then now I see we're gonna move towards value and what is in those and how can you take it from a 
a business to consumer model to a consumer to business model where you're really seeing the maturation of that data, you're seeing companies leverage what's in there and really creating value add back to the business through great people going online and uh, doing reviews of your business and what you can do with that important data. So I, I'm hoping that the industry goes to a really value add piece with social. Well, time flies when you're having fun and you're engaged. So uh, if you'd like to ask some additional questions of our panelists, uh, intercept them. They have to walk off the platform that way. <laughs> and uh, before we talked about social and we all met a channel, uh, we often meant face-to-face -face communication. So I don't know if you're up for it, uh, but perhaps our panelists are to ask a few additional questions. But uh, this concludes the panel itself, so can we give them a nice round of applause, please?